So that's what Pandora actually looks like. James Cameron's Avatar is one of the most visually stunning films ever made. But what does it look like without all the CGI? The animators have taken what the actors are doing and gone even beyond that. Natiri lives a pretty unique lifestyle as one of the Navi on the planet of Pandora. One of the things that we see Natiri partake in is drinking water from a leaf. But because director James Cameron loves to rely on technology innovation, the way that the scene was actually filmed without CGI may surprise you. Zoe Saldana was required to work with a grey plastic contraption to model as the leaf, while holding a water bottle covered in duct tape to simulate water coming from the tape. We guess that's why they call it movie magic. It's the most high-tech film in terms of its execution. You may or may not have had an awkward kiss in your life, but it probably wasn't as awkward as it was for Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana when they had to kiss as Jake and Natiri while filming Avatar. While in the movie itself, with all the added CGI, the scene plays out romantically. Without all the CGI, Worthington and Saldana had to kiss with their motion capture jumpsuits and with green dots all over their face, so that the motion capture on their characters' CGI bodies would be accurate and more real. We created a manually operated gimbal rig that they could balance on. One of the most exciting action scenes in all of Avatar was definitely the flying banshee. Obviously, a lot of CGI was needed to be done to bring the banshee to life, as there's no living real-world counterpart to the creature. In order to capture Jake flying on the banshee, Sam Worthington was required to fly on the back of a moving plastic structure, where he'd be flung around with wires, all while wearing the motion capture suit. Honestly, we think we'd just prefer the ride at Disney World that seems a bit more comfortable. See them flying these things, they are working hard. It's always intense whenever anybody in a movie yells, but when a blue-skinned alien like Natiri yells, it's even more powerful. You will never be one of the people! Despite the goofy motion capture getup and the silly plastic Navi ears, Saldana was still able to be quite intimidating on set. Layers of additional CGI were added in order to make Natiri and the rest of the Navi look even more real in the film. You definitely wouldn't want to tick Natiri off. I at least have no idea that I'm wearing this. I feel like I'm blue and I'm nine feet tall. The big villain of Avatar was Stephen Lang's Colonel Miles Quaritch, who, unlike a lot of the other characters who required CG, is actually a human. One might assume that the Colonel's mech suit design was all CGI, but they would be wrong. The main core design of the suit was a practical effect, but it was the arm and the digital screens that were later added with additional CGI work in order to make the suit a more formidable force to the Navi. The final product proved to be quite the treat to the Navi and made Lang's Colonel an even more memorable villain. With rumors that he'll be back for the sequel, he may even bring that mech suit back. Oh yeah, who's bad? That's right. One of the first dangerous creatures that Jake encounters in the jungles of Pandora is the fierce Thanator. While the Thanator is quite intimidating on screen, the creature wasn't much to look at before the CGI was added. In fact, before the CGI was added, standing in for the Thanator was a red tennis ball on a long grey stick held by a crew member. In order for the actors to go on cue, the crew member holding the Thanator's stand-in would lunge at them. Life on Pandora would likely be much easier if all the Navi had to worry about was a tennis ball on a stick. Cameron has a knack for working with actors and actresses he's worked with before, so of course, one of the actresses he brought with him to Avatar was his alien star Sigourney Weaver. Weaver plays Grace in the film and doesn't just play the character in human form, but also as a Navi. While even in her Navi form, Grace typically wears human clothes. Behind the scenes, Weaver had to still wear a motion capture suit to convincingly play Grace's Navi avatar. From Alien to Ghostbusters, Sigourney Weaver has clearly made her mark in the sci-fi genre. We had horses galloping around this place. It wasn't just the human actors who were behind motion capture technology on the set of Avatar, as actual horses were used under motion capture technology for the dire horses. The horses were equipped with dots on their body, much like their human co-stars, in order for them to be transformed later with visual effects. The horses were brought to the soundstage of the film, and Cameron would film the actors behind the Navi riding the horses with the special technology that would allow him to be their CGI counterparts as they were filming. Who knows, maybe those horses went on to take other motion capture roles as well. Despite all the extensive CGI and motion capture present throughout Avatar, that didn't mean the actors had to perform less stunts. In fact, it was quite the opposite. 
Whenever we saw the Navi climbing up the vines of the ominous floating rocks on Pandora, Cameron had the actors behind the Navi climb a similar structure, all in their motion capture gear. The final CGI was added later, but still, that didn't make the climb not dangerous. Though you can't really become one of the Navi without at least getting a little bit rugged with yourself and your environment. Motion capture wasn't always available when capturing scenes with the Navi, especially when they shared the screen with the human characters. When recording the scene where Jake first wakes up in his Navi form, Cameron filmed the actors playing the human doctors working around an empty gurney. Behind the lens of Cameron's camera, he was able to see the CGI character. We went to Kauai, we went way up in the mountains, and we acted out the scenes. Before the motion capture work was done for Avatar, Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana filmed without their suits, half naked in Hawaii. This would be done in order so James Cameron could know how to plan all their scenes that would need motion capture, such as the bow and arrow scene. The Tree of Voices is perhaps one of the most gorgeous looking set pieces in all of Avatar, but behind the scenes and without the CGI, that sacred tree wasn't much to look at. In fact, the trees were mainly just pieces of rope that were used to simulate the long leaves and branches of the trees that Natiri would present to Jake. The final CGI would be added into the production later. To say, these stunt guys, I mean, they really just they gave us their all. The Navi clearly have a different culture than what we're used to, and Cameron wanted to display some of the tribal customs of the main tribe in the film. The group of four actors may not have had the biggest roles in the film, but that didn't mean their work wasn't difficult. These actors ultimately had to memorize a tribal dance of the Navi in all their motion capture suits. Now that's true commitment to the craft. If this was CG, I could have moved that in 30 seconds. So the whole time I was shooting the virtual camera, I was complaining that it wasn't live action. While there were times on set where James Cameron and his crew had more accurate models of the Dragon Assault ships, there were times where the models wouldn't be enough. In order to film the scene, Cameron had the motion capture board use a metal-like chair in the middle of the set that would be moved around by crew members. A fan was also placed in front of the actors in order to properly capture the wind blowing in their characters' faces. While the real set may not have been as exciting as actually flying on a ship as a Navi on Pandora, the cast and crew certainly made the most of it. They develop uh, the most lightweight 3D system possible, so it's a very sophisticated technology. The 3D, much like the CGI, had to be recorded in a distinct way using two cameras. This scene where the colonel is attacked on his mech by one of the Navi used two cameras to perfect the 3D and the CGI. One camera would be used for the live action elements, and the other would be used for the CG 3D elements. I need you to put up $10 million to prove we can make this movie. Avatar is one of the most influential films made in the last 20 years, and the CGI is an important reason why. From Cameron's innovative ways of incorporating the CGI to the commitment for authenticity by the cast and crew, Avatar's production was clearly top-notch. What was your favorite CGI element in James Cameron's Avatar?